lot of videos out there, some of which I've created myself, talk in great detail about what exactly a data scientist is. But then a very natural follow-up question is, what is it that separates a great data scientist from all the rest? So keep watching and we'll discuss this. I'm Richard and this is Richard on Data. Now there have been a lot of articles that have been written before about what makes a data scientist particularly good or what separates the great from the good. And I think a lot of them offer some very solid perspectives. I'll have links to them in the description of this video. But having said that, I do think a lot of them cover some topics which are fairly table stakes. That is, they're the bare minimum requirements to get into data science in the first place. Or a lot of them cover some more specialized sorts of topics, which a lot of people out there are just not going to have to do from day to day. One example is deep learning. I mean, let's be honest, there's a lot of organizations out there that just aren't ready for that yet, or they just have the sorts of problems that are not going to be solved by attacking them with convolutional neural networks. And cloud services are another example. So while it's true the interest in these grew massively in 2019, again, there's just a lot of organizations out there that just aren't there yet. Now I've put together five qualities that I think separate great data scientists from the rest. Now this is in part inspired by the articles that are out there, but it's also heavily influenced by my own experiences at the organizations I've worked at and the qualities I've observed in the data scientists that really stood out from the rest. And these are in no particular order, but what I've tried to do here is come up with things that aren't specific to any technology that your organization may or may not use. I've tried to think through things which are more universal in nature and that are going to apply to 80%, who knows, maybe even 90% of all of the data scientists out there. Before I get into all these things, one thing that I would request of you guys is to please take one second to smash the like button because that really does help my content reach a larger audience. Also my YouTube content has always been, is, and will always be free. But with that being said, I do have a link in the description of this video to my Patreon account. So if you guys would be willing to support me in that way, that would be massively, massively appreciated. Now I mentioned that these were in no particular order, except that number one might be the most important one of all of them, and it's that an excellent data scientist is gonna be very skilled at focusing on the big picture. So data science makes it incredibly easy to get lost in the weeds sometimes. So it's really easy, at least in your head, to come up with an idea for some kind of solution to a problem. But then the devil is always in the details. Maybe your solution relies on some package and the package doesn't work really well, or your solution is a model and the model's performance isn't what you thought it would be. And it'll happen sometimes that you have to kind of course correct and maybe think up an entirely different solution altogether. And that's the thing, it's really easy to suffer from analysis paralysis and to just endlessly end up going down rabbit holes trying to get something to be perfect. But there's no such thing as a perfect solution. The person who sees the big picture is fundamentally okay with solutions not being perfect, but sees how that solution is right for your clients or your product's needs, as well as your project's time constraints. And they're not going to try to push for super complex solutions when it's clear that a simpler one will suffice. So this one is all about having that laser focus on delivering value to the stakeholders and where that value is coming from. It's not about being married to any kind of tool or model or process. The second factor that makes a great data scientist is being an excellent communicator. There's a lot to unpack with this one because there is a lot that goes into communication in data science. In fact, I've done a video on this very topic, which you should definitely check out. There'll be a card up above and a link in the description. And one of the first things I mentioned on that list is being able to shift from thinking about technical needs to business needs. Some people on your team who you work with will be very technical people, and yeah, you need to have detailed conversations with them. But at the end of the day, your clients will almost always be business people, and you need to be able to speak with them in terms of things they understand and things they care about. And a great data scientist asks a lot of really good questions to make sure they understand what the right problem to solve really is. But I also think one of the most important elements of all of this is being able to explain complicated concepts to somebody like they're five. 
It's really easy to assume that your audience knows more than they actually do, and that's typically when you end up confusing them. So that's another common pitfall that you're gonna want to avoid. It's a tremendous skill to be able to describe some graph or some output or some model in two to three sentences, hyper-focused on the things your specific audience really cares about. And this applies even with communicating with your team, which is generally gonna be more technical people. I mean, if you can introduce to me some new model or technique, and in a very straightforward fashion, explain to me what the benefit is, I'm a lot more likely to be on board. Number three is, a great data scientist is going to be very organized. When I did my video on the worst mistakes I've personally made in data science, I listed not creating analysis plans when I was just getting started on that list. And that's the thing, I think data science attracts a lot of people who are highly creative, but they tend to be a little bit more on the side of being spontaneous rather than natural planners. At least that's based on a lot of the data scientists that I know. But here's the thing, especially when you don't have a lot of experience, it is incredibly easy to underestimate how long things are gonna take. And like I mentioned in item number one, data science is a field where it is incredibly easy to get lost in the weeds. And that's where planning will really help you out. That can mean time boxing, how long you're gonna explore something before you take a step back. That's just an example. One great technique that I learned several years ago was to really ask yourself, what does a two hour solution look like? Then what does a two day solution look like? And then what's the two week solution? And something else that helps me out a lot is writing out all the steps of what I'm going to do with my R code before I start writing a single line of code itself. That's something that could really help you from getting boggled down in little details. And there's other general good practices that go with this. Things like documenting your assumptions and commenting your code and using version control systems will go a long way both for you and especially for the people that you collaborate with. Fourth item for this list is having a deep interest in the domain as well as the business problems that you're working on. Let's face it, a lot of brand new data scientists tend to not know too much about the domain and their focus tends to be on finding new opportunities to try new techniques rather than the specific business problem at hand. These guys don't tend to make a whole lot of headway. But fundamentally, a data science job is just like any other job. And new technologies and new models, they will get boring a lot quicker than you might think they do. So if you don't care about the work itself, you're going to burn yourself out really fast. But it's not just that. Having that deep interest in the domain as well as the specific business problems is going to cause you to ask key fundamental questions. It's gonna make you ask great questions about what problems your client faces and why what they're doing now isn't working. It's gonna make you question the assumptions that you've made as well as the business processes on the back end that generate the data that you work with. And what an interesting domain is, is going to look a little bit different for everybody. I personally really like the healthcare and life science industries, but I would make a terrible data scientist in the insurance industry because that industry just fundamentally bores me. Nothing against it, that's just how I am. And at the end of the day, this is another one that comes back to really caring about delivering value rather than caring about tools and methods and processes. But none of that is to dismiss the importance of having a strong technical skill set. And that's where the fifth and final item on this list comes in. And that's that a great data scientist is always growing their stack of technical knowledge. It's well known that in the tech world, there is more innovation being generated than people have the capacity to learn, even if they literally spent all of their time learning rather than doing. And frankly, I can't be prescriptive with this one and say a great data scientist is somebody who's an expert at both R and Python, or is somebody who knows every single machine learning algorithm, because once again, your own interests may differ from all of that, and at the organizations you spend your career at, they may just not have an extremely strong use for all those individual things. But what I think is important is the realization that your learning doesn't stop after you get your college degree. And it's a humility and a reckoning that you don't know all that there is to know. 
You do need to have a curiosity and an interest in learning new technologies and new methods, but you also need to have a willingness to share your work with other people who may be more technical than you, and they may be able to think of different ways than you thought of to attack a particular problem. And you should generally keep a pulse on what's happening in the data science field at large. Don't get steamrolled by new things. I mean, what technologies and methods are people using out there to solve problems? You do that for some period of time, fight through your imposter syndrome, and before you know it, you're probably going to be a rock star in the technical realm of data science. So that's my five qualities that make a great data scientist. But I want to restress here that greatness in the data science world is highly subjective and it is going to vary substantially by organization. Ultimately, you have to do right by your organization and your stakeholders and meet them where they are. And that's going to look a little bit different in every single case. But if you have these five qualities, I think that you're going to do an incredible job. And who knows, maybe you'll even get a promotion here and there. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it or you found it of value, please consider sharing it and once again, smashing the like button. Also leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think makes a great data scientist. Then I'll see you all in the not so distant future. Until then, Richard, on data.